Funding for Shape Realists is provided by... Uh, nobody today. It's just me. But I do have a podcast channel now with my friends, so that's cool. It's called ShinyCast. Episode 1 is out now. We talk about Animal Crossing and Honeydew and other wacky topics. Link in the description. Hey everyone, I have big, big news. news. Remember a few videos ago when I couldn't figure out what rank verb meant? Well this, this is what I meant. I'm gonna rank every single Phineas and Ferb song ever. Well, kinda. See, I saw this joke on Twitter about how the Phineas and Ferb wiki turned a two second jingle of Ferb sneaking away into an entire article. And that got me thinking about Phineas and Ferb songs in general. And that got me thinking, why don't I rank all of them? But then I realized that the wiki is straight up insane with the number of things it considers songs. I, I, I can't keep up with it. But now I have a solution. Behold, the list of Phineas and Ferb songs article on Wikipedia. Inator. You'll see, Perry the Platypus, all that ranting and raving about Wikipedia, my Ralph Breaks the Internet video. It was all leading up to this. I planned this. This wasn't a complete coincidence. Anyway, we got a lot of ground to cover, so let's get into this. This video covers every single song listed on the article, plus a few bonuses that the list would feel incomplete without, including the bafflingly excluded Doofenshmirtz Evil Incorporated jingle, and of course, fur. Anyway, let's get started. You, you all signed, signed the waivers, waivers right? right? The moment has arrived? More like the moment is ruined because I can't even hear the song over people talking! Same problem as the moment has arrived, but it gets bonus points for the title alone. No offense, but this song is kind of so busted. Now, on the list of jingles that are really not okay, that was really not okay. Barely a song and it reminds me of Five Nights at Freddy's. No thanks. Look, I feel positive about 98% of this show, but Evil Carl is the dumbest thing it ever did and I just find the song really annoying and not great. It ranks higher than the other F-tiers by virtue of at least being a real song. Okay, this one drove me crazy because it's not on the Phineas and Ferb wiki despite being on the Wikipedia article. I think it's just this short series of doo wops Vanessa sings while getting ready. Whoop de doo, moving on. It's kinda nice, but it also sounds like it's telling Perry to die, so no. This is barely a song and there are better summer related songs later, so yeah, nah. I'm not sure half of this even qualifies as music. This is just one bar of a Perry the Platypus parody and it's not that good, moving on. Not particularly worth talking about. We're removing this one from my to-do list. I had the volume turned up to the max and I still couldn't hear what they were singing. Regular gum was better. More focus is put on the actual scene than the song, and the song isn't a particularly good fit for the scene, so weird combination. Not terrible, but not impressive. It's so short that I don't know why they bothered, but it does give off a very Larry the Lobster vibe, so that's nice. Nature's gross! Thank you! Thank you very much! My mom told me that song! No. Lyrics. Go Phineas, go, go Phineas. Go Phineas, go, go Phineas. Oh yeah. Go Phineas, go, go Phineas. Go Phineas, go, go Phineas. Go Candace joins the battle as Go, go Phineas's Echo Fighter. Why are these little girls twerking? Why did you make this? Gonna be real with you guys, I don't like country or western that much. If only some musical genius would combine them. Anyway, yeah, not a big fan of Home on the Range, so let's move on. This song ends with a bunch of cows eating in the cafeteria like civilized individuals, which was absolutely a hoot. A small step above its predecessor. Oh my god! Are we sure that Alka Files wasn't intended for Disney Jr.? Pretty extreme, but not really that great. Doof sings and then dissects the Muffin Man song. Honestly, I've heard worse. I have no reaction to this song. I guess this qualifies as a song, so it'll stay. For now. Doof, I know that's your voice. Why are you doing the vocals for this song? Did you use up your ex-wife's money? Well, they said we a lot. That's it. Very low energy, which is surprising since it's a song about hardcore elderly ladies competing in a roller skate race. That sort of thing sounds like it would be filled with zany energy. But alas, tis not. This is the exact same song as She's Candace, except cynical and depressing. No. If any other character sang this, it would probably be higher. But this character just doesn't sell it, I'm afraid. Should've just let Baljeet sing, honestly. Should've just let Ferb sing, honestly. A little hard to hear over Candace's intimate get-together, plus it doesn't really fit the scene super well. I'm sorry, Doof, you did not convince me to give you my money, and your telethon is not my new favorite show. This song gives off the exact same energy as that clip of Kyrie running and laughing on the beach. That dude's got some serious squirrels in his pants. The lyrics of this song may actually be literal nonsense. Greenland wishes it could have an anthem as good as Dufania's. This is horrifying, and for once, I do not like that. A bit of a boring invention song musically and visually, but hey, at least Bobby Fabulous gets a solo for once.
It's not the worst jingle on this list, but far, far from the best. Insert star related pun here. Cool fight is just not much of a song. Kind of reminds me of that one song from the Tom and Jerry movie. That is not a compliment. I want nothing's far less successful younger brother. I rewatch Night of the Living Pharmacists a lot, but honestly, I skip this song nearly every time. It's not too great. As Carl once said, Oh, those kooky Dutch. Rippin' pasta, Rusty. <laughs> Just background music for watching Norm's morning routine, but it's not the worst background music for watching Norm's morning routine. Is it really that fun not knowing where you're going though? Getting lost kinda sucks. Oh well, the song is fine, I guess. I swear to god, the kids sound like Elmo in this song. It's frightening. It's a More bagpipes than I would've liked. Not one of the best jokes in the special, to be honest. It's a little better because it included R2 Scream. There are certainly better songs about spending time with Perry, but none of them are specifically about spending half a day, so points for that, I guess. That whale mingo be dummy thick, though. I guess it was kind of cool, but not very cool. Hope you're cool with that. Not awful, but it's got a rather weird beat that I just can't quite get into. I'm sure the version in Baljeet's head was better. Baljeet consumes many double cherries and kidnaps Buford. I like this a little better than the last version. Those nostrils sure were on that bus. This is when I started to feel a little fatigued by songs in the Christmas special. Not bad, but nothing special whatsoever. It's very Irish, which is neat, but it's not something to write home about. Stop inviting Irving to things. I sure did learn a lot about bees. Innocent people get bored. Do you think that's what Jimmy Neutron looks like without hair? Pretty standard montage song for a pretty standard montage. Very educational, not quite as memorable though. Not bad, but not much to write home about aside from the title. Pretty standard montage song for an episode that could have done with something a little more. That sure was a lot of babies. Kind of boring. Let Stacy sing, you cowards. It's it's alright as far as platypus related songs go. Very laid back and chill. Definitely gives off a do nothing vibe, but also kinda does nothing for me. Who would have thought? The only truly memorable part was Doof getting murdered, but still, that's something I suppose. I actually kinda wanna go to a swap meet now. Good work, song. That sure was a lot of moms. This song did not adequately convince me to buy a shimmy jimmy. If it did, it would be higher, I guess. It appreciates my time, but it is American propaganda, so. Candace dies many times, the song. Ends really abruptly, which is no good but Vampire Candace is still a fun concept. Pretty generic, but I like watching Buford fall over, so sure. I think Swinter was a one-hit wonder. Buford talking about how he fought a squid for Biff is better than the song itself, to be honest. Fairly wholesome ballad about what it takes to be a squirrel. Not bad. Fun little rock climbing song, but not one I'll remember. Not one of Love Handles best. The main chorus is really wordy and doesn't sound amazing, but it's fine. Makes me want another Mario Strikers game, but with Phineas and Ferb characters. Million dollar idea, Disney, right there. Take it or leave it. It's nice to see things go right for Candace for a change, and this is pleasant, if a bit unmemorable. I would unironically watch this show. Starts out like a Barney the Dinosaur song, but gets better by the end. Poor doof. Would you all join me in a moment of pressing F? Thank you. This song took me on a spiritual journey. Hop to the finish and don't look back. Wholesome, but there's not a whole lot to it. Always found this one kinda low energy as a kid, even though its purpose in the episode is to discourage low energy. Weird. It's better within the context of the episode since the original jingle was so bad and dreary that it caused rain every time. So while this is certainly a step up from that, it's nothing special on its own. Another country and or western song. Not really my thing, but it's kinda fun because of the visuals and Ferb drumming on a guitar which is totally how that works and produces music for sure. Slightly better than Truck Driving Girl. At least it's not a country or western. But still, not a great sign if you're more engaged by the dialogue than the music. Why are we still here? Just to suffer. Basically, this is that, but in song form. I feel like I learned way more about Buford than I wanted to. Most of this song is just Perry grabbing various items to obscure Doof's view. That's probably why I enjoy it. Sounds a little too pleasant given the subject matter, but still kind of fun. Remember when Jenny existed? Neither does the show, but still kind of fun visuals. A little too manic for my tastes, but a fun-ish time nonetheless. LMAO, just bring scissors and cut the knot. Easy, done. Song's not much, but the visuals are great. Also, Phineas, you just murdered the people in this movie theater. Why would you do this? That sure was a song about meatloaf. Perry and Chad Tronic fused, and this is their theme song. Actually pretty fun once Candace hijacks the song. Everyone's talking about how the animals go, but no one ever talks about where Norm's mouth goes. What the hell? You know what's not cool? Interrupting someone who's singing about their feelings. You should be ashamed, can't dance Flynn. This song really wants to be a whole new world, but ends up sounding more like a song from Cats. But I'd be lying if I said I didn't kinda like it. Gives off the same vibe as that Pixar short knickknack. Kinda soothing to listen to, but not anything special. Also, how did Ferb's shoes get unsewn down to their aglets? What's going on here? Aw, this is so sad. 
Do you think he knows the Muffin Man song? Is that a mother Star War reference? He's Bigfoot, he's Bigfoot, he's Bigfoot, Bigfoot, Bigfoot. That, that's it, that's the song. Where Rabbit versus Where Cow. Dawn of Justice coming to Disney Plus in 2025. I put this in C tier for Candace. It's okay, kind of an inferior version to It's all about you, girl, from Boys Who Cry. But hey, it could be worse. Candace could be a praying mantis. This is just she's Candace, but better. But not by much, moving on. I guess this is the backstory of Doofenshmirtz having backup singers. Huh. What do you know? Anyway, it's short and pretty fine, I suppose. Jeremy, we're like brothers, only closer. Nice big band sound, but still generic in the grand scheme of Christmas songs. I can smell the flash animation from here. Honestly, not a great theme song for a potential spin-off, but not terrible either. Pretty smooth, but it doesn't come with a ton of energy, sadly. It's all right, but also kind of forgettable, except for the dancing pig. I like the dancing pig. There's better Candace songs and better busting songs out there. Kind of repetitive, but it does have some creative visuals and ideas, so points for that. 3D Asteroids! And also the song itself is okay. I do like me some robot chimeras, not bad. I like some excuses to do new animation styles, and this is that, so that is neat. Funky fresh, but not super memorable otherwise. Cute little quest starting song that just doesn't live up to the rest of this episode's music, sadly. It's literally just Isabella singing Let It Snow. The lyrics aren't changed to better suit the show or anything. It's nice, but also meh. Not bad, but kind of feels like a parody of a typical Phineas and Ferb song, and I don't know if I dig that. Candace can be pretty bonkers sometimes, but this relatively decent song takes the cake in that regard. Every single one of these kids got a simultaneous bullseye. That is impressive. Wholesome visuals and Christmas magic that make up for some not super inspired music. But I can't be too upset with this song. Look at the Peanuts reference. Plus, it was good to see me eat. Not the best big pro summer musical number performance, but not bad. I prefer Let's All Dance Until We're in Intensive Care, personally. Okay, but who brings waffles to a picnic? Candace gotta go fast, but sadly the editing is a little choppy. Still, cool sounding vocals. This is basically everything I know about sports. Taking verses out of the song and replacing them with a fez isn't as good of an idea as you might think. I agree with Baljeet. Weirdly upbeat for this episode, but not bad. Don't worry, Dr. Diminutive, you will make a keen ally in the Short King army. I prefer the Pippin version of Extraordinary, but this is still kinda fun. Something about Perry and Doof's soul trek through the desert really speaks to me, and I'm not sure why. Pretty wacky, and I appreciate that, but I don't know if I dig the static visuals as much. Kind of a nice celebration, but also kinda generic, and I had to deduct points for Gangnam Style. Sorry, I don't make the rules. It's kind of catchy, but really overrated. This was Gitchy Gitchy Goose competition in the musical Cliptastic Countdown. Really? I like the Squidward's houses in the background, though. The original Doof song is probably one of his weaker outings, but hey, he sure did hold that high note. Also, there's pigeons, so cool. One of them might be Will Smith in disguise. Doof, get down! Maybe there's a good reason Doof doesn't sing metal songs. Still, it turned out better than I thought it would, in all honesty. It's a weird little jingle, but it's sonically pleasing, so sure. Pretty fun, but a massive step down from the OG song, I'm afraid. Great, now I've got the OG song stuck in my head. It's pretty cute and creative, just not particularly memorable. Also, Phineas and Ferb being anywhere near a school is absolutely cursed. I can't picture that whatsoever. Wholesome, but very short. Pretty enjoyable in both iterations. I can dig it. Enjoyable letter retrieval song, though I don't know why it's so hard to find. It's literally the only pink letter there. Just grab it! Damn, I learned a lot about sharks. I thought Shark Tale made me an expert, but I guess not. Pretty charming flying song. I like it. Okay, so um, I literally just put a picture of handsome Squidward in the script, so I'm I mean, that, yeah, that, that, I guess that's all I have to say. Yeah, that makes sense, I think. If this is the weakest song in your special, that's a sign you made a pretty damn good special. Damn, Jeremy can sing, and yeah, this is a pretty fun Boat Safari Umbrella Ride musical number. It's pretty okay! Kind of reminds me of the Johnny Test theme song with all the rapid things they mentioned, so that's a thing, I guess. Aww. Just let these crazy kids make out already. What? Gives off some serious there's a hole at the bottom of the sea vibes, which is radical. Nice catchy road trippy music that we listen to inside Candace's innards. You don't need context for that. Is it just me or does the ending part of the song sound like the Drake and Josh theme song though? Super creative visuals make up for a fairly generic song musically. Some creative concepts and a nice hook make this fairly enjoyable. Is yellow actually the color of fear? I don't think that's right somehow. Everyone at the head enhancement clinic said nobody would notice! The lyrics are real funny, though this song clearly misunderstands the true potential of two helicopters fighting. Pretty creative from a visual perspective, even though the visuals are pretty minimalist, which is doubly impressive. It is a distant cousin to Home on the Range, but it's leagues better, so I don't really mind. Wash your hands! A nice rockin' epilogue to an episode filled to the brim with great music. I like it. Baljeet is 
into it, and the visuals are pretty neat. Pretty cool vocally and visually, even though that's clearly Major Monogram singing, you can't fool me, Swampy. Pretty creative concepts, and an alright beat make for a moderately fun time. Good to see our favorite pharmacist turn over a new leaf. Fun little song. Pretty fun alternative flavor of the vanilla gitchy gitchy goo. I dig it. Honestly, one of the best motivational songs I've ever heard. This is the best song to watch without any context. Every villain is lemons. Very folky, and I enjoy me a very folky Doof song. Doof says the word society in the first five seconds. Society. <laughs> Now these are some creative visuals, and the song has a nice beat to it as well. Can't complain too much. Pretty enjoyable song detailing a true battle for the ages. Candace should duet with Candace more often. Enjoyable, though it's not nearly as interesting a subplot setup as the A story in this episode. Still, glad Doof is kinda happy. A little repetitive and simplistic, but also pretty hilarious. What is Jeremy gonna wish for? It's still a mystery. Damn, I kinda want a ducky Momo now. Is that a mother Star Wars reference? Pretty radical idea, I just wish there was more to it. Aw, wholesome. Not amazing musically, but it's got that feel factor to it. Stop making me look at forward-facing Phineas again. Once was enough. Enjoyable song about open communication between you and your nemesis. That's gold. Pretty funky fresh, and I like the title cards. Enjoyable little number for Candace. Nice to have a song in the Christmas special that isn't excessively Christmassy, too. I like this. A charming little tale about the Black Knight of Worcestershire and or Worcestershire and and or Wesselton, and or Weaseltown, and or... Honestly, this convinced me to buy a brick, so that's why it's higher than Simi and Jimmy. It's fun. Why would you wrap buildings up like presents? How is that practical? Anyway, kind of generic, but Olivia Olsen is singing, so that catapults it a little higher. Is that a mother Lion King reference? Very wholesome and elaborate, plus love handle is always a good thing. Klimpaloon is a legend, and he gets an accordingly nice song. The finale was pretty high concept and elaborate, but this song summarizes that high concept nicely, while also being pretty enjoyable as well. Fun little ballad from Doof. You know, it might be higher if he didn't stop so early, but we'll, we'll work on it. Needs more dapper fur, but still. Fun visuals and very soothing. I'm starting to think maybe gamers don't deserve rights. This kitchen's not the same without you. My brother and I joke about this song a lot to this day. It's super repetitive and excessively extreme, but I still really like it, honestly. The weakest song from the original Love Handle set, but still pretty good. I like the different genres they go through individually. They just don't really come together into a cohesive set. Also, the song peaked at the beginning. Pretty fun battle that makes up for a fairly forgettable song. Same thing, but I do like frogs, so it's a little higher. Is that a mother Star Wars re Oh, wait, yes. Yes, it is. Intense. Emotional. Epic. Pretty good song, but at the same time, I kinda see why it was deleted. It's a bit redundant compared to other, better songs that cover the same concept. That sure was a lot of doofs. I can't be the only one as a kid who counted if Doof actually took 17 seconds to lose consciousness, right? Catchy little Calypso. I love when the show experiments with different genres of music like this. Cute little Isabella song, but it's not as good as some of the other Roller Coaster the Musical hits. Love me some good King Wenceslas, and the flavor Buford's lyrics bring to this version are honestly pretty fun. So this sounds like a real-life opera song that I've heard before, except with one added line in English, so I don't really know what this is, but sure, I like it. I always found this song particularly catchy as a kid, but to be honest, it's mostly this high for Why do my nostrils whisper to me? Great callbacks. I'm starting to think that Candace had actual squirrels in her pants. The Kinder Lumper isn't nearly as horrifying as the giant floating baby head, but this song is pretty enjoyable. Pretty solid one-hit wonder, though I think Lindana's kids have her beat in that department. Adrenaline-filled fun. Also highlights just how weird it was that the original episode didn't have a song. But at least that's fixed now. Ah! There's not much to this song at all, but honestly, the random of the lyrics, or should I say lyric, really sell it. So how does it feel to have your platter posterior handed to you on a plate, son? Yep, that says it all. Enjoyable and villainous, but maybe a tad too long for my tastes. Oh well. I am all the Sith! How did Bowling for Soup get into the future, though? Are they still young? Are they immortal? I need answers! The animation is flat out insane, and it contributes to a super cool, adrenaline-filled musical number. Good work. Wholesome stuff. I feel for Candace and her adorable obsession with Ducky Momo. Emotional. Epic. Enjoy it while you can, Monty. Ferb is playing the long game. Really weird and repetitive, but that's what I like about it. It's a feature, not a bug. Swinter is really pleasant and charming, but also kind of a jingle you would hear in a cereal commercial. That's not a bad thing, but not amazing. I also don't understand the logistics of freezing and tanning at the same time, but you know what? It's still good, so sure. Pretty sick beat. 
Can't complain. Exciting opener to the very last PNF adventure. It's a great hoverboard in time. A superior My Undead Mummy and Me. It's wholesome and has some really wacky lyrics to boot. A delightful variant of the theme song as per the season it occurs in. Holiday season, that is, not TV show season. I feel like I gotta specify that. Carl is kinda underrated as a character, and I approve of his theme song. It's pretty enjoyable stuff. Fun subversion of a typical doof song. It's nice to see him completely indifferent towards something for a change, and the fast tempo makes this enjoyable as well. Fun and trippy though, how hard is it to close the interdimensional portals before the norm bots go through them? Come on, Phineas, what are you doing? Is this racist? Genuinely asking, I, I can't tell. I mean, it still slaps, so that's good. Also, there's Perry! I love me some live-action gags and cartoons. Plus, I always found this crazy three-stage song really soothing and memorable. Good stuff. Carl's theme song, but with more cosplay. I like it. He's Major Monogram. I like it. Call me crazy, but I think there might be lots of him. I don't even know why this song was even here, but I kind of love it. Perry and Doof are gay. I am not accepting constructive criticism at this time. A real jam with some striking animation, plus Buford and Baljeet ate lots of spaghetti. Gay. A super short gag song, but a really funny one. I love Candace and Jeremy carrying everyone out on a stretcher, and also I don't know what Venus and Mars means in the song, but I like it. Let's go. This is way too long to talk about a 15 second song, but oh well, I'll stop talking about it and move on eventually. Candace gets murdered by many phones, and the beat is pretty sick, so I approve. Don't do drugs. Stay in school! I already dug it, but then the soundtrack started arguing with Baljeet, and I shot it up 15 slots as a result. Pretty good general busting song. Plus, it always astonishes me to remember that Jenny exists. Vanessa, please step on me. I mean, what? Yep, it's the quote unquote song that kicked this whole thing off. A two second little Perry-esque jingle that sounds great, and then it's over, the end, moving on. This gave my 13 year old heart so many feels I was not ready for. A super fun rundown of some of Phineas and Ferb's greatest hits, courtesy of Candace. I like it. Not only is Doof 2 more successful at being evil, he's also more successful in his marriage. This says a lot about our society, society. I think. This kinda slaps, not gonna lie. The stomping of the crowd's feet is a great touch, plus bonus points for recycling. I give this song a crudely drawn picture of a coconut crab. Remember when Buford was an antagonist? Me neither, but here's a pretty fun song about how Phineas has a triangle head, plus other stuff. Really, the lyrics are what makes this one. I love how Jeremy just shows up out of nowhere with a tambourine. But yeah, pretty wholesome stuff. Not the best pro Perry song, but it's up there. Good job, Larry. Not much to say, I'm just really happy this exists. Good idea, Kevin. Paul Bunyan's this song is good, but not too good, eh? Some wholesome stuff, boys. Though, being younger, related, and boys doesn't necessarily mean brothers. They could also be cousins. Gotta deduct points for that but I still love it. Buford has Baljeet's face on his drums, and I can't tell if that's a red flag or they're just gay for each other. It's probably the second one. Delivery of Destiny is a wildly creative episode, and Love Handle's contributions add so much flair and enjoyment to the proceedings. And no, I'm not ranking them all separately. The Wikipedia article told me I didn't have to. Really pleasant invention showcase montage song, and I like all the random Buford hijinks. I wanna be a real boy! Not part of the Wikipedia list, and frankly, that's a crime. Major Monogram deserves better. This song doesn't need a chorus, it's perfect as is. Pretty enjoyable and hilarious parody of superhero theme songs. I highly approve. The overlap is killer, and the new language is creative. What's not to like? What was in that guy's pockets? I need to know. I have to admit, I never realized how cool Tatooine actually was until this song. Great use of all the planet's iconic locations and kooky characters. Plus, it's catchy. Ouch. The feels. We always get to see how Doof feels about their relationship, so it's nice to see things from Perry's point of view for a change. Great stuff. One of the funniest gags in the show. I guess it's nothing special musically, but it slays me, so here it is. Really solid. Sounds like a Parappa the Rappa song. I enjoy the back and forth between Candace and her guests. Would play at an intimate get-together. Oh no, the Beatles have been found dead in Danville. This song is comedic genius. The slide bit is iconic enough on its own. <laughs> It was at this moment Vanessa knew she would f*** this 12 year old boy one day. Doof and Doof 2 deliver a bromance ballad for the ages. I love the xylophone bit and their cosplays as various duos throughout history. Super fun song. An iconic celebration just got iconicer as this finale number perfectly closes the curtain on a masterpiece of a special. That is, until Porkins ruined it. Hey, look everyone, I'm okay! <laughs> a sad lament of the friend zone variety, where everything gets grayer the longer Isabella gets rejected by Phineas. 
But on the bright side, at least Ferb knows what he's gonna do today. Show tunes in their purest essence, given to a one-off construction foreman from the first episode. This wacky, delightful show rarely gets more wacky or delightful than this. Great musical number that gives off a lot of imperial flair through its instrumentals. I love it. Why is the animation so good on Clay Aiken and Shaka Khan? Also, this song is really great. Too bad Candace missed it. Such a jam. Who knew Baljeet had it in him? I give this song a B tier for Baljeet. Don't tell him it's not an A, he'll get pissed. Perry untrapped his arms just to clap. What a lad. Yeah, I like this one. It shows that Doof could probably have a successful musical theater career. Honestly, probably should have been on my villain song list. It's the evilest this lad gets, and it's pretty enjoyable. Reminds me of the photos you see at the end of Timon and Pumbaa's virtual safari. For real though, great ending to a phenomenal movie. Vanessa is the best singer in the whole show, and this song is honestly really heartwarming. Maybe Doof isn't so bad. What do you know? Really underrated. I love the increasing insanity and rough vocals, which really bring this intense driving test to life. And Perry writing his will is hysterical every time. End game wishes. My name is Shafe, and you'll like and subscribe. Whoop whoop. My name is Shafe, and you'll like and subscribe. Whoop whoop. D did it work? Are, are you subscribed yet? I like ABBA, what can I say? This damn song gets me so emotional every time. Just let these crazy kids bone already. This song is kind of fire. It's got a great metallic rhythm to it and it's catchy as all hell. Would not mind listening to this song during the robot uprising where vending machines become the dominant race. Always loved this one and thought it was underrated. It's got cool 3D animation and I think Phineas's vocal delivery really adds a lot. Norm could read the phone book and I would find it interesting. This robot gives me life and his tri-state area conquest is a blast musically and comedically. Awesome reworking of a Christmas classic. Everyone gets their own time to shine and it's a wonderful version of a song we all know too well. Now this is how you parody a pre-existing song. New instrumentation and a hilarious yet sad backstory make this a great listen. As far as theme songs go, this is pretty rad. I really enjoy it and I love how it builds to one sensational conclusion. Never get tired of hearing it over and over. Who the f thought up the plot of this episode? Anyway, this song is emotionally powerful and never forget the aglet. I love how the time travel episode has two songs and they both go to the Perry and Doof subplot because it's that good. My Nemesis is a fun, feel-good romp where we see the joy and fulfillment these two bring to each other's lives. Great stuff! Musical theater references ahoy! It's got great overlapping voices and some really creative visuals and seriously that's a f***ing Les Mis reference this song gets bonus points <laughs> but it did give me cats PTSD so those points get taken away sorry what I've always found this song really catchy enjoyable and delightfully haunted and that's without Buford and Baljeet's hilarious anecdotes with them it's pretty amazing Norm spitting straight fire I can't handle it what a legend performing a legendary rap of legend and stuff. Really catchy with great vocals and a great use of martial m m martian eel musical arsical instrument it unknown guy is out peace the lyrics are kind of absurd but honestly this song is fire it builds in momentum over time the visuals are exciting and as I said before Vanessa is the best singer in the entire show and we love to see the best couple supporting each other why is parsnips Candace singing this whatever this song is genuinely great. It's a solid prison ballad where we see Phineas and Ferb try to break out of this oppressive nightmare. It's got a great beat and it's disheartening in a good way. This wasn't included in the Wikipedia list, but it's impossible to leave out. An iconic jingle that's melodically pleasing and enjoyable every single time I hear it. The variations are all equally excellent, though he should really write the rest of it sometime. Why is a song about rubber bands and rubber balls so good? The overlapping voices, the instrumentation, the quirky lyrics, everything comes together with this one and I don't know why, but I like it. Ferb seaweed rap is a force to be reckoned with. This song is absolutely amazing on nearly every level. Nothing else to say except aromatherapy. Really enjoyable recap of some of the niftiest little known facts about the tri-state area. I'm a fan. You guys are gonna hate me for this, but I think this song is a tad overrated. Kinda gets repetitive towards the end, and the lyrics aren't too special, but still. It's a great You Can't Stop the Beat-esque ending to an amazing special. The music is solid, though that almost doesn't matter when compared to the amazing curtain call of characters that got thrown into this ending sequence. It's just phenomenal, and the spectacle is real. Though Norm is absent for some reason? Huh. Still great. 
I waited so long for a Buford Baoji duet, and this did not disappoint. Their voices work perfectly together, the lyrics are hilarious, the instrumentation builds to a great climax. I adore this song, and nothing will ever change that. Also, I ship. Ship! Ah, yes, the skiddy up biddy up bida bida ba ba song, as I called it as a kid, and still call it to this day. Honestly, this song is great. Very simple, but I always enjoy hearing it over montages of the boys working on their inventions. It has such an air of whimsy to it, and it's so hard to dislike. This song is fabulous! A great intro to Bobby Flay and a tremendously enjoyable disco number. I mean, you gotta admit, he does look pretty darn good. Candace's wild parsnips voice makes for a rockin' ballad with tons of references to past episodes. This song kicks so much ass, and it's a shame Candace didn't stay to do another. Yeah, it's just a tiny little out of nowhere rap, but honestly, it cracks me up. There is no reason for this, but it happens anyway. A delicious dose of nonsense humor tied to a pretty sick beat, making for an iconic end ending to a vastly underrated episode. You guys are gonna hate me for this placement, but honestly, this is one of the funniest gags in the entire show. A magnificent subversion of the typical I want song, this masterclass in writing and composition endures as an artistic triumph. Those who do not recognize its beauty truly do not understand culture whatsoever. God, this is such fire! And the best part is that Perry was only controlling Doof's movements, not his words. Doof was spitting this fire on the spot. What a legend. What a phenomenal song. Doof serenades us with a gorgeous masterclass in how to make music. It's just the perfect blend of country and western. Hell yeah, I'll do whatever he says. That buttery voice could tell me to jump off a building or blow up Malaysia or review over the hedge and I do it. Oh wait, the hat broke. Never mind, I'm not doing any of those things. That's a joke I am reviewing over the hedge, don't worry. I have no idea what just happened, but all I know is that it's S tier. What a ride. It's truly indescribable. Anime will be the death of us all and I for one can't wait. The most badass theme song ever written. James Bond could never. The horniest Phineas and Ferb song ever written. Norm can get it. Damn, my boy Lawrence got some pipes. This is honestly phenomenal. Sounds like a real 80s song with its irresistible synth. I've been listening to it over and over lately. It's so damn great. Absolutely magical from the lighting effects to the vocals to the palpable bonds between these boys and their platypus. This song is a phenomenal opener to one of the best TV movies of all time. Everything you could possibly want in a finale song and more. And more? An excellent recap of some of the summer's most memorable, magical moments, and a bittersweet farewell to a cast of characters we've grown so attached to. I still get choked up when Phineas waves goodbye at the end. I'm honestly obsessed with this song and I don't know why. Maybe because it's just so random. From the 3D dreidels to the various staples of Mexican and Jewish culture to the magnificent overlap between the vocals, this one just has it all. I'm probably the only person on the planet who would put this in S tier, but oh well. Picture this is the gift of an episode that keeps on giving. Boys cried when Orpheus turned around and sent Eurydice back to the underworld. Men cried when Doof's innator zapped his true love and made her feel nothing. A tragedy for the ages. Excellent song. I love when a bunch of characters all get their own solos, and that's what we get in this shoe whopping blast of a song. It's fantastic from a musical and character perspective. The parts complement each other extremely well. It gives off such wonderful 50s flair. Oh my god, it's just phenomenal. Absolute banger, with Candace and Doof expressing their excitement and finally having a chance of success in a musically dynamic, visually fun way. Their voices complement each other nicely, and the visual parallels to Busted are a great touch. I listen to this one over and over in my spare time, to be totally honest. The catchiest one-hit wonder of all time. The fact that this song is consistently sung by characters throughout the entirety of the show, plus it can break through the supreme fire that is My Name is Doof, tells you all that you need to know. It's a masterpiece. Now this is how you end an episode. It's an amazing song with a ton of emotional impact to boot. Everything comes together from the timing of Doof's rocket with the guitar to Ferb shouting, don't just stand there, man. Kiss her! To Candace pulling Phineas in for a hug, this song kicks ass and the scene makes it even better. Even as a kid, I knew the songwriters outdid themselves with this one. Ain't Got Rhythm is phenomenal. It tells a mini story through Sherman thinking he's lost the beat, only to realize it never left and that he's channeling it through common library items. The instrumentals and vocals just build and build into a sensational climax unlike anything else in this show. It's just incredible. 
I can't believe Candace and Vanessa invented music with this song. An absolute jam from beginning to end, this song just encapsulates how amazing the music of this show can be. It's a visually striking, well-sung, iconic distance duet from the two best vocalists in the entire show, let's be honest. If you say this is a bad song, you're busted. Why? How? I don't know what this song is, but it's so good. I've loved it for over a decade now. It's just so hilarious and out of nowhere. And yeah, basically it has the same energy as Shiny. There is no reason for this song to exist, let alone slap this hard. They went this hard on squirrels in my pants. What a masterpiece. What else is there to say, man? It's squirrels in my pants. Where do I begin? Everything this show is and represents is perfectly summed up with this song. It's a gorgeous, passionate ballad about the joy of summer and the inspiration it can awaken in others. Much like my animated feature ranking, my number two pick is probably my favorite song, but Summer, Where Do We Begin is simply the best. I love it with all my heart. Well, that was my list. Hope you enjoyed it. Shea Frillis is out. Peace.